I wanted to go to Iceland and I didn't know what to expect. Certainly not puffins, they're everywhere. Stuffed ones, fridge magnets, t-shirts, key rings, but on the mainland not a sign of a real one anywhere. So we boarded a boat in Reykjavik's old harbour and motored out to Lundy Island, conveniently located a few miles north of the capital to get close to the cuddly aviators. Stupidly, I was expecting a craggy and picturesque spot, but Lundy Island, which means Puffin Island in Icelandic, is really just an unremarkable lump of land a few feet above the cold Arctic waves. Helpfully, the boat company provides some binoculars to check out the puffins, because though they're quite portly, they're small and were not allowed on the island itself. So while everyone else shuffled to the front of the boat, I made friends with this seagull shot the Icelandic flag flapping in the breeze and enjoyed the ride back to the capital. It's a fine way to spend the morning. Reykjavik has an attractive city centre full of streets to amble along, but I was eager to get out of town and drive the Golden Circle, a hundred mile loop that visits three of Iceland's famous tourist spots. If you go clockwise, first on the loop is Thingfit Lear, spelled Ping Valir, which Game of Thrones fans will recognise as the Bloody Gate. We searched for hours but couldn't find Area, the Hound or Sansa anywhere. Shame. Second on the loop is the Geezer, which I didn't waste time shooting, and third on the loop are the mighty Gulfos waterfalls. Perhaps they're not quite as mighty as Niagara, but they're certainly spectacular. However, this is a long way to come to see water tumbling off a cliff. And what the camera doesn't show are the hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of selfie sticks all waving in the air and trying to gouge out the eyes of any unsuspecting falls watcher. Back in town we struck gold and found this place. It's the Icelandic Punk Museum and it's located in an old public toilet under the street. In the bog, every display seems to end with a version of the phrase, and still no punk but eventually we bump into the only Icelandic punk band I know of, the Sugar Cubes. And here's a picture of Bjork, who doesn't look like she's in Iceland at all. Down in the old toilet, I found a glimpse of the mischievous Icelandic sense of humour, and I felt at home, even though I didn't know anything about most of the music. For the uninitiated, there are headphones hanging from the ceiling playing some of the local punk music, and instruments on which to bash out the chords to Pretty Vacant if you feel inclined. I climb the stairs back into the midnight sun with a smile on my face. Eager to see more of the island's scenery, we drove towards Herval Fjorda to visit a sheep farm. Like every part of Iceland, it's windy here, but the scenery is stunning and they let you visit with their Icelandic ponies and hug the lambs. And the visit concludes with a meal of some of those lambs' brothers and sisters, um, no thank you. The scenery around the fjord is stunning, but I was eager to go back to the city to visit Iceland's unique cultural hotspot. I am of course referring to Iceland's phallological museum, and if your Greek etymology is rusty, it's a museum dedicated entirely to the penises and phalluses of various animals. Sadly, Dick's Trips was unable to get a discount at the front door, but we pressed on and listened to the taped earbud guide, which is unintentionally packed with snickering double entendres. And of course, there's a gift shop. Next time we're in Iceland, we're gonna venture further away from the city and perhaps do the five day circuit of the island 
in one of the motorhomes you can rent out by the airport. But I'll insist that first we return to Reykjavik's fish restaurant for the best fish and chips in the world. Thanks for watching travellers. We'll see you on another Dick's trip soon.